Welcome back to another construct video and in this video we'll be carrying on with our Pokemon series. Now currently we've got a working battle system and while there's a lot of stuff we still need to include we're actually going to move away from the battle system and start working on the other parts of the game being the world map today. So we're going to go to our layouts on the right hand side, right click, I'm going to add a brand new layout and we're adding event sheet as well to this one. And our separate event sheet will manage the movement in the overworld sort of area. Now, before we continue, we're actually going to do a little bit of file management, just to make our lives a bit easier. You'll see we've got a lot of files down here. And as we add more and more, we want to make it a little bit easier to navigate through these. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a preview account, you can just add a subfolder. You can put everything into a subfolder, which is what I recommend. However, most users have probably not got that, so I'm going to show you a different way that we can approach this. So what we're going to do is take our attack, we're going to rename it, I'm going to call it battle underscore attack. And we can do the same for every single asset, and every asset that we've got so far that's linked just to battle, we're going to add the word battle in front of it. Now we can leave stuff out like the keyboard and the mouse, because these are going to be universal, and even your arrays we can leave as they are, but everything counts. What I'm going to do is go through another word battle in front. And this is something that you might want to do. It just means that you've got all your battle assets alphabetically sorted at the top, then anything else we create will be able to see more easily. So I'm going to quickly do that now. And okay, I've just finished now. So you see that everything has got the word battle in front of it. It just means that they're all grouped together. So any new assets that I create will probably go underneath this as they're probably going to be have to be. Take a couple of minutes, but it is worth the time. So let's start working on our world map then. So we're going to right click, insert a new object, scroll down. We're going to add something called a tile map. And this first tile map is going to be called world map. Now it's not technically the world map. If we look at a world map scale down that our player can look at, it's not going to be that world map. It's going to be what our map looks like and what tiles we're going to use for that. So just click anywhere and we get a tile map given to us by construct. We're not going to use that one. What I've done is I've put a Google Drive link below and it's got the two tile sets we're going to use today. So download both of those and we're going to start by implementing the smallest one of them, which is this Pokemon tile set two. It should look something like this. Now, this is one that I've created. It's a really simple tile set but it's going to be really, really useful today and we're going to get some really good benefits out of it. So just hit the X and you'll see that it fills up our whole screen. Now we need to do a couple of things with this tile set first of all. First thing, it's not 32 by 32. The tiles are only 16 by 16 and that's going to be the size that our game operates off. With our tile set, we can zoom in a little bit and if you don't have this tile map window, let me just close mine. I'll show you how to load it up because I know that sometimes it can get closed by mistake or we close it down and then we forget how to reopen it. So go menu, view, bars, and the tile map bar. And then I just normally drag it into this bottom corner here and zoom in into a decent size where I can see it. Now we've got grass, path, and water tiles here. And you see that they're in a weird pattern. And this is designed on purpose because what we can do is we can place these down normally, but it does take a long time. And trying to do the edges of paths can take quite a long time as well. So first thing I'm going to do is take the bucket tool on tile 32 and fill it in so we've got grass everywhere. We're now going to go to this tool here which is called the auto tile brush and we're going to edit our brushes. Start by zooming in and we're going to take brush zero and I'm going to rename it. This one is going to be called path and it's asking us to lay out our auto tiling brush. And I've laid it out in the same pattern that we need today. So all we're going to do is click on the first one. Then as it moves across, we're going to follow it, move to the next line. And again, just follow it along one at a time as it goes through, clicking each time. And I'll explain a bit more what this does when we can actually see it in action. So that's the first one done. It goes back to the start when we're finished. We're going to make the next one brush one. We're going to rename this, and this is going to be water. Now this is an auto 47, and this just means that there's more variations and more combinations. And I'll explain a bit more about that when we see the limitations of our auto 16. We're gonna use auto 16, it's easier to implement today, and I've not learned enough about tile maps to create one of these larger tile maps. So again, with this one, we're gonna to go to the water tile, start with number four, 
and just click across one at a time until we've clicked on every single tile. And once we're done, hit the X. Now, how does this work? So first thing I'm going to do is just click on the white arrow. And I'm going to zoom right in because actually we're dealing with quite a large space at the moment. So I want to zoom in and work on this small space here. So I'm going to click anywhere to load this tile map again. Get my little tile brush. And let's start with a path. So if I click, it's going to put down one of these grass, uh, one of these path blocks. If I click a second time, it starts joining it up. I can quickly draw and it will work out which tile I need based off what tiles have come previously. So really, really useful. Now you can see there's a couple of bits that just don't quite look right, especially on the edges here. And again, that's the limitation we've got with working with only the 16 brush instead of the 48. And you'll see it's a little bit more of the water one as well. So if we grab the water brush now, and I add in some water here, you see it looks a little bit strange at times. So this one doesn't have the same effect as the path. It's a bit more noticeable, but it's still quite nice to add in. And again, quite quick, and we can do quite a lot with it. So some of my limitations um, with creating this is just still understanding the tile maps, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with this. And again, it's just a nice quick way that we can put down these tiles, but I haven't to spend too long on it. So I'm gonna add in a couple more lakes over this side. I did a nice big one over this side, just to give my town that little bit of variety. In fact, we can add some spots that maybe we can implement a surf mechanic later. I'm not sure yet. Uh, and you'll see the corners don't quite work. But again, it's good enough for now. So with that done, we've got our first one done here. I'm going to go back to the layers. If you are on a premium version, I recommend getting a new layer and going above. But you only get two layers on the free version. And we're going to save the other one for a menu system. So only if you're on the premium do I recommend starting a new layer now. Rest you instead lock this layer. This means we cannot click on this tile map anymore, no matter how hard I try, unless I do lock unlock and this just means we don't accidentally click on this again because we're going to add a second tile map and this is going to be for our buildings so scroll down go to tile map i'm going to call this buildings and trees so add it in and again there's a second tile map in the description for you to download inside that google drive and this one's a really really long one this one has a huge amount of tiles now we could probably make an auto tiling brush from these tiles in fact i've used these to help me make my own and i also credit the person in the description who actually sourced all these tiles from the game but there's a big huge range here of different tiles that we can use so how do we implement them into our game so we can hit x go back to our tile map i recommend dragging this up so we can see it and let's start with some trees so first thing i'm going to do is actually resize this tile map because you'll see that when I'm cursing over I'm actually selecting more than one tile so I just need to quickly go over and do 16 by 16 so now with that done we're going to take this tool here which is the area select tool I'm going to select this range of tiles here so these are the trees and once I've got that I can go back to my pencil tool and now I can start placing a large amount of trees so if I do this about right and start this at the end there. This take a little bit of playing around. In fact, I need to start that way around. That's how you do it. I can start placing some trees around and start to create a bit of a border for my level. Now this one's a bit more tricky, so I'm gonna come back to that one. Like so. So I've got a little bit of a tree border now for my level. Now there's some larger trees I could also get, but I think what I want is Pokemon Center now. So I'm going to scroll down until I find one. This is one here. And again, I'm going to take the area select tool, select the whole of the Pokemon Center, and then simply place it in. I think we should grab the area select, get a Pokemon. Going to place it over this side. Our town's starting to come together. And now I want to show you one that's a little bit more tricky to put in. Let's do this house here. See, the house is missing part of its roof. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the whole house and place it in as normal. Now, the reason it's missing so much of its roof, it's not that we forgot to do those tiles or those tiles have not been sourced. 
It's just that these are repeats. So instead of wasting another tile spot, we just cut it off so there's room for elsewhere. It's a way to save on memory. So you see this quite a lot with tile maps. So what I'm going to do is just take this tile and just use it to override like so. And actually, I think I need a different one. There we go. And I also need a center roof tile like that. So we can implement these ones and there's other ones that do this as well. It just takes that little bit of time. But this is a working tile map. We can now take these different parts and we can start putting them in. So if we want this little tiny bird cage for whatever reason, we can now take this and we can put it in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next video we'll get the player working and I'll see you in the next video.